Good morning, Bullish Bears. Um, I've been working with my fan lines drawing them manually for quite a while now. I'm going to show you how to draw them manually, and then I'm going to show you a neat trick that I found with uh, Trading View here. But let me go back to my old school ways real quick. Let's get our five second chart up, and I'm going to blow this up on the big grid here so we can see exactly how to draw these lines. When you understand how to draw them, you'll understand how to use them. So essentially, when I come up with a fan line, the first thing I look for is a common trend line. So if I can find a common trend line in any time frame, in a consolidation or in a trend up or down, I can identify that with one line. And then I can take and add a second trend line anywhere. And it can be particularly easy if you intersect the consolidation. I'm going to draw this here for an example. So anytime you have two common trend lines that intersect and divergence occurs, that focal point, that center or nexus where everything lines up is irrelevant. What you want to do is trade what's coming. So what you're going to find with this is an easy ability to identify measured moves. This works particularly well in an opening range. So if you're going to find an opening range and quickly identify targets, all you have to do is divide the divergence. So we're going to add a regression line in the middle of this right off. And even though it exceeded a couple deviations outside of this channel that has emerged, you still have quite a few trading opportunities. So if you've identified angular support, pretty easily. You can take this reversal right off of angular support as price crossed back above the 8 period. You can take a long position on the reversal and your target is easily identified by the regression line. That's your first target. Um, if you caught this quick blip and scalped out of your position on that, great. If you made it at least to your target, you still made profit. And then the objective is to be able to identify measured moves. So if you missed this reversal and you caught it as it crossed the regression line on this pullback and accumulation, once price sustained above the moving average here as it crossed above that regression line, you have a one-for-one -one measured move that you can trade on the outcome of this. So you can enter long here and exit your long position when it gets close to the angular resistance that we established from back here. And it's a common line, but we can also add deviations to it by simply adding outside of the channel. So we can come to the same center point or we can add these later in time as just simple divisions. And you can find that that can subdivide that time frame on these channels that emerge and you can identify several more measured moves. So we have a resistance rejection here. We've got a one leg here. A target becomes the next division line right here. And you can see that's a common trend line. It just follows peaks pretty well. And then it goes under price here. So you can say that this is a easy measured move from here down. And I'm demonstrating this on SPY, but it's very useful for scalping futures. And this is a five second chart, so you can identify very quick moves. And that was an easy one for one. So you have one leg here, your second half of the measured move is here. And this actually gave us a two for one all the way down to the previous regression line. So if you got short here, you could take your profit here. Or if you saw price reject the eight period here and had a keen eye for it, and eight period was breaking down through that division line, you could ride that trend all the way down to the regression line and get a two for one. Well, how many points is that? So if we got short at uh, 418.85, just relative to futures, you end up taking um, a point for every 10. That's pretty decent. That's a nice four point move from here to here. So you make a pretty good profit on that with even just one ES contract. It's pretty good return. Um, you could also catch the rebound if you dare, but I prefer to wait for better setups as they come. So I can go and identify some more subdivisions and you don't have to start them at the focal point. You can go and add them as time goes on anywhere within that time frame and simply subdivide. So we go, we can identify the next trade by waiting for price to break that line 
or we can go and trade this chop if you dare. That's a little bit harder to trade for most beginner traders, but the measured moves, the one for ones, are the gravy trades or the easier trades to take. So we'll subdivide this. Now we've got a very good identity on this particular measured move. I'm going to adjust that just a little bit. As choppy as this was, this rejection here, price came under that trend line and resumed. We got one leg of the move here. Not saying go short here, but you can take this signal on this rejection here and take this little part of it for a continuation of about the same move below your new regression line. I always change the color of the regression line to white because it helps me identify them later in time and I can certainly make more and more plans on that as time goes on. Stay tuned for another video. I'm going to go and show you the trading view way to do this with literally just one drawing tool instead of having to draw each of these lines manually. Thanks for joining.